in the interest of time, I'll try to stick to the objective. Uh, basically, I've uh, aligned the presentation in a way in which uh, you all are from medical fraternity, you all know much better than what we as operations people can explain on the clinical side of vision center. Basically, whatever you saw now is exactly what we do in the state of Tripura. So, you've got an experience of it. It would be a similar experience in their local dialect and resources mobilized from Tripura and little outside from the state. I'll focus more on how did we get started in the state, what was the basis of conceptualization, how did we design, how did we, what is the kind of challenges we had there and what we actually anticipated, what we did not anticipate as an outcome of this program. So Tripura, I mean, these are basic numbers which most of you all might already know. One key thing uh, which I wanted to highlight about Tripura is, Tripura is a landlocked uh, state which is very different from any other states in the country. You have Bangladesh between West Bengal and Tripura and if you have to connect by any terrestrial connectivity, it would be uh, a 48 hour journey, either by road or by train. I'm not even sure if there is train connectivity or you'll have to go through Silchar. What is translates in the literal sense is most of the even secondary or tertiary care requirements, people have to fly across Bangladesh and reach West Bengal. And the government actually sponsors their cost because that, that, that is the biggest challenge for that state and some of the uh, spending, most of it goes into transporting patients, getting them back, etc. Or there are doctors coming into the state from, I know that doctors from Arvin, some of the doctors from uh, West Bengal, they come there to clear, like in, in, in ophthalmology, they come there to clear, clear the backlog in cataract surgeries, etc. So that is how they have been mitigating the situation. Um, when we got started, Tripura had, uh, it still has about 19 uh, public sector healthcare infrastructure. Like for example, ophthalmology, Indira Gandhi Memorial Hospital is the uh, secondary tertiary care outfit out there. Uh, one of the key challenges, you know, when we got started, 37 lakh population uh, and 23 ophthalmologists to service them. And around uh, 26 optometrists available in the public healthcare system. So if you typically visit a subdivisional hospital, uh, typically, you know, even if you have a doctor there, the support mechanisms are very, very minimal. And uh, connectivity by road, you know, in interlands, it gets very difficult. And 2007, August, uh, sorry, 2007, uh, April, when we got started, the insurgency was also a, a problem in that part of the town. So whatever I explained, basically, uh, today, the state has only about 19 ophthalmologists. So out of the 23, I remember when we got started, uh, and he moved to the east for various reasons known to him. Um, so 19 doctors and the workload in Indira Gandhi Memorial Hospital, you can imagine, entire, even for primary screening, the patient load will pour on to Indira Gandhi Memorial Hospital. That's how it was. So when we went and propagated uh, the... the, the approach what we wanted to do there, um, I mean it, it actually sounded Greek and Latin at that point to most of them. Uh, two things, either they have to increase the uh, human resource in the state or they had to find an innovative solution. So it, it was actually an accident because department, we were also consulting the Department of Information Technology Government of India under the National E-Governance Plan. One of the component was called as the Common Service Center. Uh, and I was heading on that particular thing, uh, ICT intervention in healthcare outreach. So fortunately, I got a budget of 10 lakhs, which I was allowed to explore, experiment. We reached out to Aravind, and when we requested them, since I was reasonably familiar with Vision Center from the nascent stages, so I thought there is relevance to this. The old idea evolved that we will co-locate inside the common service center. So that was the pilot on premises on which we got started. Um, so we by oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, common service center is uh, part of the national e-governance plan where uh, the Department of uh, uh, Information Technology had budgeted almost 23,000 crores. Which ha it has three components. Uh, one is the statewide area network, which most of the states today has, have rolled out, and the state data center where you can run multiple services, including your. Uh, telemedicine or electronic medical record under a central repository. And 
common service center was framed under a public private partnership model where uh, every uh, six villages in the country will have an information center i mean technology enabled communication center which will focus on health education e governance veterinary science agriculture electronic business uh, and uh, yes there are mixed outcomes of the common service center which i am not getting into details of it but on the healthcare front we 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 uh, decided we'll work in tripura and arvind uh, in i mean with due regards to this place this is where all of us learned due respect to this uh, entity here without which none of us would have learned uh, when we went and told this to the government uh, they said okay fine you are allowed to experiment since you are bringing in the money so based on milestones they assured us that we may internalize or we may not internalize so that is what we did so the premises on which we started was lack of qualified medical doctors functional access points for patients accountability of patients identified a structured escalation of patients to tertiary care support which means we we actually aimed at reducing the patient load at agartala reduce cost of servicing rural patients uh, rural patients and for patients reduce the cost of accessing uh, tripura is the only communist state in the country today and the government is serving the second term by virtue of this they didn't and even today as a philosophy they don't allow they don't charge anything for the patient so that i i see personally as a challenge for sustainability reasons but they have reasonably taken it very seriously and they are moving forward so these were the key peer stakeholders in the program one was the national rural health mission the npcb which you know falls under that and uh, government of tripura uh, knowledge partners arvind eye care system netra nirmay niketan ramakrishna mission hospital at aldia and ilfs as program manager on this and some technology partners from whom we took the web based video conferencing tool etc and the technology the one good thing which came here which we also consciously took up decision that we will use not because we worked with arvind because there was a choice of uh, you know deciding what software we would use the application the electronic medical record and 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 the integration software etc from imaging etc we decided that we will go with arvind for one reason is their entire workflow process was already mapped because they were running vision centers here so this gave me an advantage just to focus on you know making the system understand the doctors to give, be trained on it identifying the operational aspects and just plug and play just buy these equipments integrate and put the solution together so our focus went into human resource management mostly so we did it in a three phase manner which was pilot so we did one center in melagar one interesting outcome which i think i should definitely share here is honestly i didn't know that we were deploying it in the chief minister's constituency immediately after we deployed five or six months down the line the elections came for the uh, the assembly elections i was told by the nodal officer that the chief minister's vote bank increased by some 18 or 20 percent because of the vision center because in a state like tripura a person like me getting into even a block headquarters is known to everybody it's such a small community and this actually you know help the program to scale up because the chief minister took notice everybody took notice and they said we'll scale this up and then the phase 2 happened for which uh, we we wrote a proposal on behalf of the government and this was sent to npcb and then npcb funded the program from there on and then that's when the beginning of the internalization happened subsequently then the phase 3 happened rest of tripura was covered so whatever you saw on the tele, on, on the real time consultation earlier this is the network architecture i assume even in arvind how it happens so if you look at it at indira gandhi memorial hospital we have a centralized hub a, a miniature data center which runs the vision center management system an audio video conferencing setup a support center where everything is monitored around which we have 40 in every block we strategically located a refractive vision center in the block headquarters and not in the primary health centers i'll also share some insights why we took that call then and that is back to back linked to the igm opd and we have built a link into arvind here also which we haven't effectively started and a remote training which we are again 
setting, trying to set it up this year between Nethre and Nirmani Ketan. Because today, after uh, almost seven years, there is a continued medical education which is happening for our optometrists who run this center. So from starting with basic consulting, today there is a senior resource person in Agartala who conducts every week, sorry, every week a training session. These people have to write their reports. They write, submit these reports uh, as a soft copy which gets evaluated and now we want to bring that into a structured thing. So higher order certification can happen for these resource people. So what have we reached so far? So that is our data center in Agartala. We have this uh, 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 towers which are set up in every block. For example, as I told you, the statewide area network is what we initially wanted to uh, depend on for connectivity. But at that time, we got a uptime on the connectivity to about 27 per person, which would have really brought down the project. Then we decided we'll, we'll find funds to a tune of about half a crore and we in invested on a private network. So we have a point-to-point -point kind of a link which gives as high as 2 Mbps connectivity in these places, which has allowed us to screen about the number is as of March. Today I think we are at around 2,20,000 patients who have been screened in every vision center. Like how Tulsi sir said, on an average we get 18 patients. Uh, I'm proud to say that we do about 22 patients a day. And I, I remember I told the chief, uh, Dr. Nam here that I will outbeat you all and I'll do, I'll have more number of vision centers and I do, did have more number of vision centers before Arvind did, but then that become a stagnant thing. So what are all the benefits? Of course, the general stuff is fine. One key thing which we analyzed out of the report is on the total capital expenditure which went in from the government uh, in setting up this infrastructure servicing and the operational expenses which goes into this. Cost per patient today is 186 rupees, which I assume could be the, I mean this we can measure. We have a database and you know I can account for every single patient there. The cost of spectacles, sir, only for students it's given. The rest of them still buy. So medication, whatever is administered given from the vision center is not part of this. It's just maintaining. It, it turns around to be around uh, 8 to 9 lakhs, but there are few things which I have to narrate. Like it has to be a cluster. You can't start one mission center. It doesn't serve the same. Things like that. Should I complete and then I'll take this? So till date, there's one more interesting analysis which came. Of course, this data is pertaining to 2008-9. Uh, uh, number of women or female patients who came to Indira Gandhi Memorial Hospital the percentage at that time was, unfortunately I didn't plug that slide here, is around 28 or 30 per person. And the rest were all male patients. Whereas when we did the same uh, year end, we did the analysis in our vision centers, it was 51% of uh, female as patients, women as patients, and the rest were male. And I was given to understand in one of the Vision 2020 forum that globally women are prone to have more eye ailments and disease compared to men. I don't know if that data is correct, uh, which proved it right in our case, which means why uh, women uh, did not access is because they didn't have access. They had access issues. They had issues because I remember when we deployed the first center, there were few places like Mungiai Kami where our team has to get into a convoy which starts at 10 in the morning, finish all their work and we were not allowed to stay back, come back to the convoy by 4. And once I had a situation where a, a railway engineer was, was kidnapped and I was told one of them was shot. And that's the kind of, uh, you know, the terrain in which we deployed the project. So I can imagine that, you know, ladies trying to access would have been a problem. But today it was much more safer. You can travel reasonably well. Similarly, caseload in Indira Gandhi Memorial Hospital reduced as we expected. And Two things which I attribute to the success is, I think the doctors wanted to support the project because the caseload went down. And one interesting thing which we did, which was very different, of course the learning is from Aravind only, most of the telemedicine projects in most of the other, uh, you know, areas of uh, healthcare is you have a separate full-fledged telemedicine consultation all and things like that. And even in, it was very difficult for me to convince 
the state health department they were willing to give me a palace i mean a large room with a, a, a nice uh, you know air condition etc whereas we were insistent that we wanted to set it up in the opd counter and out of they have six opd counters in which two places we have the teleconsultation facility where uh, 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 doctors are rotated and on that particular day in this opd counter they reduce the number of patients so which means doctors don't differentiate between a regular consultation and a teleconsultation which helped us to internalize so one key learning is patient load reduce so doctors wanted to support us more and one another thing which we did is on the training front in the pretext of technology training we moved around six doctors to aravind on a rotation basis over a one and a half year period along with the technical training we also gave a soft skill training an attitudinal change training and all our optometrists were trained in netra nirmay niketan for 3 months where one of the key things which we taught them was proactive citizen approach so today if you access any of our vision centers in tripura our optometrists will step out and say there are three patients you may have to wait please wait these are things patients who have never experienced now that i'm saying healthcare facilities in the government system is uh, you know not proactive to patients they are overloaded so the doctor wants to move patients fast so this is distributed which allowed us to do this so the review patients we get about 15% number of glasses prescribed is so much the cataract surgeries out of uh, uh, the entire patients who have identified were around 6002 and today we also can align them or not everybody has to immediately move in so we know which batch these patients have to go all that planning happens at the central level in agartala these are the kind of diseases which we are able to identify from our vision centers two things which really moved me is there was a baby whom i have seen with congenital cataract and the mother had no idea that the child was not able to see and these things i'm sure without the access created there would have been a big problem the second case was a patient who came to us uh, complaining about diminished vision and finally translated into a brain tumor case and uh, fairly by the time they were referred uh, it was mitigated and understood this could be the suspect so finally the key things is like of course technology customization outreach to masses information transaction efficiency account accountability etc all this are theoretical I, i'll skip that now i don't know if i can share this but this is the inside story what i think is the takeaway why did we we managed to sustain the program and drag us the nodal officer is the guru for all of us there he did the key things though he doesn't understand technology in great detail he believed from the first milestone we achieved and we showed him and fortunately he was not shifted out as i told you the government is serving the second in year so it makes a huge difference in that champion being there finally it is still a champion model because we have never been able to scale it up outside tripura as of now yet i believe that we can achieve now that i i have got the right audience which is unbelievable if not for uh, sir dr chakrapani there i was very happy then he said i'll get you the audience and i didn't tell him that this is the right audience i've been wanting to share this learning with and the second thing is we though the government initially took time to ask for the accountability from day one we were submitting the reports the key challenges the learning etc and it was internalized till the level of the chief minister because it was a small system and it, we were able to do it and our project manager as as a blanket approval to access up till the level of cm to appraise it because they wanted to keenly follow on this development and an highly and motivated team which we had built at every level incentivization is a must one we gave them a we, we gave them a training which none of these optometrists most of them are from 23 optometrists who actually graduated in various colleges they had an employment opportunity which they otherwise doesn't exist in the state and two people who were available in states like west bengal orissa found opportunity here you wouldn't believe they they were all qualified people but as a layman i understood refraction reasonably better than some of them some of them initially used to just add lenses take and this is your power kind of a situation from there now they are highly trained good quality resource people 
the challenge I also have is they get poached by some of the private new entrants into the system. But the good aspect is we are trying to give them continued medical education. Year on year increments were ushered in spite of certain challenges, which could have been difficult. So this is exactly what we did. The consultation comes from the private system, but the frontline work team is totally uh, autonomous entity under our management. So they are tracking performance, everything works like how it works for my performance appraisal in my private system. So these are some of the key learnings. With that note, I really thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much.